guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who have yet to subscribe, please drop a like and subscribe. Uh, it will really help me a lot. So today we'll be doing a tutorial on how to engrave and cut using the Lion's Forge Craft Laser. When we are talking about engraving and cutting, we are actually needing two things. We are requiring a DXF file, which is a 2D sketch, which define the borders or to be cut, and an image file, which is used to engrave. So what kind of image file is best that is uh, best for engraving is basically a black and white image file. Because uh, when you're using a black and white image file, the borders are well defined. So when you are engraving, it has a better resolution and your engraving will look much, much better. All right. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. All right, guys. So welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be showing you on how to engrave and cut on the Lion's Fort uh, Craft Laser. So before we start, we need to have a few things uh, in place. We need to have an image that you want to engrave and also a DXF file. Uh, DXF file is the boundary. I would say the boundary where you want to cut. Okay. So it's an outline uh, of the, uh, the article that you would like to cut. So how I'm going to do it is that I'm going to place the boundary first. So I know within the raw material, where are the boundaries that you are going to use and which one is uh, outside the boundary. And then we will insert the photo or the image within that boundary to be engraved. Okay. So first of all, we are in Inkscape and the first setting that you need to do is to click on file and click, uh, click on document properties. Okay. So in the document properties, you will specify the size, the dimension of the raw material you are using. For my case right now, I'm going to use a acrylic and the raw materials dimension is the width is 270 mm and the height is 70 mm. So here, the changes I made, I uh, put on landscape, default units is mm, units is mm, okay. So it will change into this uh, long rectangular uh, format, okay. So it's weird because uh, this is actually the raw material that I have and that is going to be engraved and cut at the same time. So what's next? So file, go on file and click on import. <clears throat> and you search for the DXF file and click on open. So don't, uh, I don't meddle any of these uh, dimensions or these parameters. I just click on OK. So from here, you can see that uh, this is the, the, uh, the boundary. Okay. What are we going to do today is that we're going to cut a bookmark and engrave on that bookmark uh, image and name. Okay, so now I already designed a uh, boundary using a, you can uh, use your own CAD uh, software. It could be, the one I'm using is using Fusion 360. You can use Onscape, uh, SketchUp, any CAD software that can export into a DXF because ultimately you just need to design a 2D sketch, okay, of, uh, of a line, okay. Uh, this is the, uh, the 2D sketch, the DXF file. You just need to design a 2D sketch and export it as a DXF format. Okay. Once you are done with that, you import. Now you can see that this is the bookmark. Okay. So you have to insert images within that boundary. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to insert again uh, the image that I want. So here's a uh, image that I want. So what you can do that right now is that you click on this and you click on the line. Okay. <clears throat> so you resize it such that it is uh, within the bookmark. Now, uh, for my image here, it's a bit too big. If you wish to crop the image on Inkscape, what you can do is that you click on the image and click on create rectangle or square depends on what kind of shape uh, out you want so i'm going to click on this rectangle here don't mind the color so i am going to select 
the image and this at the same time. And then you click on object, clip, set. So this is what you get. You actually crop the, the image. Okay. Alright. So the bookmark consists of my logo and my name. Okay. So what's next? How, how are you going to approach this project? So the first step is that you need to do the engraving steps first. Okay. So uh, first step is engrave, then you cut. So in this same uh, image, okay, you click on extension, uh, 305 engineering, raster to laser. All right. Uh, set the export directory to a folder and the name. So usually I put uh, one uh, somewhere in the file name so that when I select the file on the Lion's Forge, I can identify like one as a step one and two as the cut. So if the file name is too long, you might not be able to read the whole file name. So it's be easier for you just uh, put one uh, in the file name to notify you that okay this is the first file that you need to do and the other file 2 uh, which is for uh, cutting uh, is the one that is the second step that you will be using to cut you so what are the parameters that you need to look out for is the resolution 10 pixel per mm uh, BW fixed threshold BW threshold is 180 and engraving speed is 3000 okay all these values are not set by me I just follow the settings are provided by the vendor uh, at Lions Forge. So you can find those values inside your manual as well, inside your settings manual that they provide for you as well. So uh, once you have set the export directory and file name, you click on apply. So it's actually uh, scanning the, the file and it will actually generate three files, which is the preview, PNG and the G code itself. So the G code is actually a text file, but do not be uh, confused. The text file is the G code that has been used on a machine to raster or engrave. So once we have done with uh, the uh, engraving step, so you have that uh, file. Next, you click on the DXF or the boundary, the line that you uh, you imported just now. The in this case is the boundary of the bookmark. So I click on that boundary and again I go under extensions, go to generate G code for Repetier, Repetier laser tool. So now travel speed 3000, 300, 100. Okay, all these parameters are set. You can copy from me because these uh, parameters are the same as what the vendor uh, recommend from the settings uh, that is uh, provided when you buy the machine. So these are the, all the settings that they have uh, already specified that you should follow. So just follow accordingly. Uh, so now it has generated two G codes for engraving and cut. All right. So now what you need to do is that you go to that following folder that you have uh, saved the file in and extract and copy those two files, which is uh, part one and part two into an SD card and that SD card will be transferred onto the Alliance Forge Craft Laser later on, all right? So while I am preparing the raw material to be engraved and cut on the Alliance Forge machine, so what I, my preference would be, I place the raw material here and I will add uh, masking tape at the sides, okay? As you can see here at the sides, uh, why? Because as you move in and out this tray, it might cause the raw material to shift. So you want the thing to be accurate cut accurately and if let's say this raw material is shifted off right it will not be a nice cut it will not be a nice uh, product at the end so you want it to stay in position so how you're going to do that is the raw material you need to have something to anchor it in its place so i'm using a uh, masking tape and tape it at the sides so that it will stay in place while i shift and throw the the tray in it will still uh, retain its position okay all right, so when I start engraving, the first thing I need to do is to uh, specify the speed multiplier. For me, my sweet spot that I usually use is uh, about 160, that was 1.6, okay? 160%, so the speed multiplier is about 160, so it's, uh, it's a bit quicker 
then definitely from uh, 100%. But at the same time, it's not too fast that uh, it might be too uh, inaccurate. Okay, so putting the speed multiplier 160 is good. So now what you need to do is that you select the uh, push in the SD card and it will appear on the menu and select the file that you want to engrave. Remember that I uh, tell you just now that uh, putting the file name as one or two, it definitely helps when you are selecting the file. So you know that, okay, oh, this is the first file that you need to use to engrave. Whereas the second one later on will be used to cut. So we are going to go for engraving. So this is the first file that we should select. So before we do that, we also need to ask, uh, change the intensity of the laser. So this is coming up next. When we are dealing with engraving, we must make sure that the laser is uh, closer to the surface of the material. So for the height, uh, the height of the laser, I choose it at number 5, which allows for a 2mm gap between the surface and the laser. Why? Because my material is about 3mm thick and I put it at 5, so the difference is the gap. Now, the intensity of the laser also plays an important part. If you choose a high intensity, it will no longer be an engrave or etch, it will be called and considered a cut. Okay, so higher intensity, it will become uh, a cut. So in this machine, the intensity is uh, manually configured by you. Uh, maybe in other machines, uh, you can specify, okay, next time you will want to uh, etch or cut, is by through the software and the machine will adjust accordingly. But uh, through Lion's Forge, you, you have to adjust the intensity manually. So my recommended settings is that you choose between uh, one third, okay? One, uh, just one third <clears throat> or less. Do not choose any more, anything uh, more than that. Because it will only constitute a semi-cut or a full cut depending on the thickness of your material. The material that I'm using right now is a uh, 3mm thick acrylic. So uh, to engrave, one third, just anything below one third is good. All right. So you do not want it to uh, cut thoroughly. So that's it. So in this instance, we are done with the engraving process. So what's next will be to cut uh, the acrylic, uh, cut the material will be the cutting process. So first thing first, you should not forget that you should increase the light, the laser intensity at the side here, right? So make sure when you increase the laser intensity is according to the material recommendations uh, set by uh, Lions Forge. So if uh, for cutting, I have to increase my notch up to, uh, to two third strength, two third power. So I have increased the light intensity to two thirds. So what's next will be here. I will click on quick settings, split multiplier. And I'll set it to 130. That's according to the vendor specifications. I remove the SD card and push it in. And it will then uh, read the SD card. And I will select the file that I uh, require that is to cut, which is part two. And click. So hi guys. So this is the after effects of my engrave and cutting process. So this is it. All right. So you can see how nicely it's engraved uh, with perfection and the cut. All right. This one as well the engravement and the cut okay so that's how you engrave and cut using the lion's forge craft laser so if you have any questions leave a comment down below if not catch you on the next one bye